I've had several emails this week about my last blog on socialization. So for the people who told me that they took their pups to a socialization class and haven't had a problem, I would suggest that they missed a crucial part of the blog. This was when I said that most pups are naturally gregarious and as such would get on with other pups, whether you took them to a socialization class or not. My suggestion was that in certain circumstances, this approach is either not relevant to a pup's development or in some cases can be dangerous for a pup's development. The other emails were generally asking advice on what to do with your pup if socialization classes are not the best idea. The confusion surrounding socialization is simply a misunderstanding of the, what the word actually means with regards to a dog's development. Many people think that the purpose of socialization is just to make sure your dog becomes a sociable creature. Dogs are social creatures and humans are social creatures, but not all humans or indeed dogs are sociable. Now we can believe they should be, but they're not. In my opinion, socialization means that your dog has to fit into your social structure at home and society at large. To achieve this, you have to expose your dog to as many new sights and sounds that are relevant to your unique lifestyle so that the dog learns to accept these sights and sounds as a normal part of its environment. And more importantly, learns to ignore them. And this has to go for other people's dogs and other people. The socialization process needs to start the minute you bring your pup home. The pup needs to recognize that we're in charge and in control of its behavior from day one. This can be achieved by the early introduction of crate training and using an indoor lead to control the dog's exuberance in the house. We then have to introduce the principle of advantage versus disadvantage. We have to ensure that everything we want the dog to do becomes an advantage and we achieve this with food. The things that we don't want the dog to do are redirected with the use of food, which prevents the dog acting inappropriately. Then this redirection becomes an advantage. Initially, we classically condition the pup to understand that its name means food. So when the pup responds to its name, it's provided with a food reward. The majority of new dog owners use their dog's name far too often without a food reward. This approach eventually teaches the pup that there is no real advantage in responding to its name on every occasion. As you don't train your children to behave, you can't train your dog to behave. What you want your dog to do and how you want your dog to act is down to how you manage your dog's behavior. I work with seven principles of management. These are focus, structure, discipline, positive interaction, training, exercise, and affection. For in-depth information on my principles of management, look at the series of presentations on Facebook or YouTube. When we buy a pup and take it home, it relies on us for support, engagement and protection. As parents, if you went for a walk with your young child and strangers wanted to interact with your child, attempt to cuddle it and show them affection, you'd be naturally alarmed. Especially if these people didn't ask for your permission to engage with the child. If you took your child to the beach or the park and a child or youngster came up to you and started to engage with your child with no apparent sign of this child's parents, we would be alarmed and suspicious. Now, as responsible adults, we recognise that we need to teach our children not to be fearful of strangers, but to teach them to ignore strangers because you can never predict the outcome. This has to be the approach we adopt with our pups because young pups and young children can very quickly get themselves into trouble and skew the child or dog's understanding of the world it lives in. Take your pup, pup's education seriously and take it to a training class or school with qualified instructors who will teach your dog how to focus and pay attention to you. Personally, I don't care if a dog can't sit but I do care if a dog doesn't pay attention to me and constantly wants to run off and interact with other dogs and other people. In my opinion, a lack of socialization, the current approach does not make a dog aggressive. 
but a lack of appropriate training can allow a dog to think that it can display aggression because nobody is in charge of its behavior.